There is a better way. Hi folks. Um, as branch secretary for the EIS Weather Education Lecturers Association here, I'll start my talk with a view from the branch, although that sounds like a bird in a tree, doesn't it, a view from the branch, and how the cuts are likely to affect us here in the Freezing Gallery College. I'll conclude with a slightly more personal response to events so far and my fears for the future. The college here is facing a £1.1 million cut in its funding for next year, which equates to about over 10% of its budget. The effect of this is that the principal and the board of management have decided to reduce the number of staff by about 10 to 15 per cent. What does this mean? It means that about 40 experienced members of staff will be lost. 40. Those 40 members of staff may have families. Those 40 families have mouths to feed, bills to pay, commitments. It could easily result in 40 for sale signs going up outside their homes. We not only lose the jobs, we create a knock-on effect in shops and businesses locally. It is frightening to think that this is only year one of a three-year um, cut of maybe 5% the following year and 5% the year after that. And this is not happening not just in one organisation, but in many across Scotland. Meanwhile, we have to try to deal with the situation here, and to that end we've made uh, sure as a union that we can be as fully involved as possible through the regular negotiating forum. In fact, we've just finished a one-hour meeting with the principal. The staff here are going to get uh, the results of that meeting uh, emailed to them this afternoon, showing the new mini-structure and where the cuts are likely to impact and the numbers concerned. The EIS is firmly against compulsory redundancies, and so we are fighting to persuade the principal to shape the voluntary severance package he is offering to attract the largest number of lecturers to come forward in the areas he has targeted. We have reserved our position as a branch on the matter of compulsory redundancies, but I can tell you that already some colleges in the central belt are holding indicative ballots for industrial action. I cannot divulge the content of the JNC we're just from, but it's not looking good. Um, and as I say, staff here will know the result of that by the end of this afternoon. What angers us is the sheer waste of losing experienced staff. They're having to go at a time when unemployment is growing and a time when education and training should therefore be expanding to cope with that very demand. We have a highly successful schools college partnership here and we're in a prime position to increase what we offer in terms of curriculum for excellence by giving so many more choices to pupils. This is being cut and we are only left with about 200 of the former 1,000 pupils that come through our doors to finish off their second year courses next year. So that's an 800 pupil loss to us and a huge loss to the schools as well. Is nobody thinking of the growing doll queues and in particular the neat generation, those not in employment, education or training? That number is certain to get bigger. What a waste again. If the government wishes to get us out of a recession, surely we need an educated workforce. It makes no sense to me what is happening. Can I just ask a question? Here's a bit of audience participation. How many of you have ever joined in a protest rally? Hands up. A surprisingly large number, actually. I was expecting fewer than that. Well, I myself am in probably the silent majority who have never done that before. Um, I've always regarded myself as Mr. Moderate when it comes to political issues, but I am personally so angry at the bully boy tactics from the government of Westminster that the first time in my life I'm joining the STUC march in London on the 26th of March next month. I'm sure Ian Tasker will be able to give us more information in his speech. Looking at the poor turnout for the visit by MSPs on Monday in this very room, I was reminded of a comment made by the comedian Victoria Wood when she said, there will only ever be a revolution in Britain if they banned caravanning. I would like to prove her wrong. And so I'm heading south in March to make a difference next month. I'm an ordinary guy, a moderate who feels so damned annoyed that I'm willing to get off my backside this time. I would urge anyone here that feels the same way to do something about it. Lobby your MP, your MSP, write letters to the government departments, get involved, join the protests. Ordinary people can make a difference. There really does have to be a better way. Thank you. is that over the coming months um, we would like to extend an invite to staff, all the staff, all the student units and the EIS fella to wherever possible get together and see what we can do 
to prevent the cuts that are going to damage further education, that are going to reduce the chances of local people, the Coat Bridge area and across North Lanarkshire, getting the skills, the qualifications, the confidence, the self-esteem, the ability to go and make a difference in their lives through accessing good jobs, secure jobs and getting on and all that has an impact on the community and what we want to try and do is see what we can do to stop it because at present they've said there's a 6.7% cut to colleges current budget and I'll, obviously some of the things I'll say will be for an FE teaching point of view but this is a thing that affects everybody and um, it would mean for the teaching budget that in 2011-2012 the cuts go through the teaching budget okay so I kind of comment on the overalls, but the teaching budget will be cut by 10.4% nationally. Now currently today in Coat Bridge, I mean other people can have a a chance for discussion and points of view, we've been told that we are okay and at present for teaching staff, and I know that the units members maybe want to speak up about what's happened to them, but at present we've been told to expect not very much, that we'll see it through and not to worry and that we're in a secure financial position. A couple of points that Jackie's always made. One, if we are in a relatively secure financial position, it's because of the hard work of the staff here. It's because the staff, teaching and support, are some of the most flexible staff across the country. That all the kind of work that we do is generated by what we call frontline staff. That is teaching and support staff that deal with the students, the student population, that deal with the community. And that's down to the hard work that we do. Um, the second point is, there can be no guarantees for 11-12. So we can't afford to be complacent. And the third point I was make is that my party is a trade unionist. I'm sure people would echo that in the room. What we look to is solidarity for everybody across the sector. We don't take that management point of view, well, if Coatbridge College is all right, which I doubt, then that's fine. Because for teaching staff, we look at James Watt. James Watt has been threatened with 100 redundancies, up to a third of their staff. The Fries and Galloway, up to a third of their staff. I've just heard this morning, Stevenson College is threatened to, uh, 30 members of staff in um, Fourth Valley facing redundancies. And again, to point out, all of that means that no, it's not just about jobs. It's important as trade unions we tackle and defend jobs and conditions and pensions. But this is about the service we provide to local people, often in some of the most disadvantaged communities um, that rely on the classes that we provide, the courses that we provide, the opportunities that we provide. And it seems to us in the EIS we want to get this point across through our leaflets, which can give you everything about right to your MPs, your MSPs, your councillors. It seems to us we need to get that across, that in this current recession it's madness to be cutting back on the opportunities for people who will be facing redundancies, who will be losing their job, and who will be facing insecurity. But at a time like set this, that you cut back on education, that you cut back on training, you cut back on the opportunity for people to generate new ideas, to gain new skills that actually can help the economy in the long run. Um, so that's what we want to highlight. And this is our first day of action. We have a meeting concurrently happening in Stuart House. So I'm saying it's a bit like Live Aid. Don't know if we do a live phone video link. Do I, <laughs> I know. Because we knew how what the technical equipment we might have been able to get a live feed. And also at that meeting, that meeting that Stuart has been addressed by a, a student representative. So we've got a student up there and we've got Ian Casper here today. Um, Angela, what Angela has said is, you know, the very start of what we can do. We are very keen to get Unison, the students, you know, every union that they can on board because I think complacency, you know, if we're all right, um, then we shouldn't really bother about anybody else. But it's important that we all pull together because as a voice, we are stronger, one voice, rather than just, you know, small sort of uh, departments or compartments or whatever. Um, and this is happening all over in every one of the colleges in Scotland today uh, with Unison, EIS, Vila, students, you know, we can't stress how important it is that we are supporting and seem to be supporting our colleagues uh, in the colleges right across the board that have been affected by this um, and that's why it's important that we don't do the, it's all right for us, we're okay. Just now we're all right, but what you've got to bear in mind is a lot of the cuts um, that the colleges are actually going through just now, we've actually employed a lot of these things in the last five years. You know, we've actually endured them. You know, we've had, you know, clear outs and full departments, redundancies, both in uh, teaching and in uh, support staff. Um, we have had, we are on 24 hours, quite a lot of colleges are not on 24 hours at all. So through our productivity as well as the goodwill of um, all of the staff across the colleges, it's got us in the position, in the financial position that we're in just now. 
um, and I think it's important to appreciate that we have actually endured an awful lot of that in the last five years and possibly that's why we are not at the same point we sort of buy but next year's a different story so just to be prepared. Um, I feel that the cuts will have a, a massive impact on the education opportunities for some of the most disadvantaged people in our communities. Also if you look at the cuts they're going to have an impact on people's jobs or will be job losses and when people lose their job they look to retrain, they look to go to take up educational opportunities to, um, to get back into employment and if there's cuts in FE at the same time as there's people losing their jobs then it could be a really desperate situation for people and we're always being told about people need to work and no need for benefits, you need to get out and find work. But when the work's not there and they're reducing the chances at education, then what are people supposed to do? In fact, at Coatbridge College, the kind of mission statement is that we are Scotland's oldest college and first college. And the community of Coatbridge and Airdrie and North Lanarkshire has been served for education and training for you know a long, long time by Coatbridge College. And if you look at the students that we get, the young people, the returning adults, the talents and the skills and the energies of the people in North Lanarks are shown they're able. They've had difficult times with their, you know, the mining, the decline of the steel industries, and they're coping with that. You know, high levels of still unemployment, um, still issues there. We get access and decent jobs, but people are been coming to Copeland's College. They've been adapting to new areas, and this is the, the terrible thing to have that community facing that again. Yeah facing that again it's just and the whole thing is it's so unfair the people that are going to suffer you know the people that are going to suffer this community that suffered through changing industry decline and went through the 80s suffered at the hands of previous um, Tory governments is going to be asked to pay that again and it's completely unfair when it's not the people of Coatbridge and the communities in North Lanarkshire that have caused the crisis so I've got every confidence that people have got the skills and the talents and they'll come to the college and they'll access it but it's just that's what kind of seems really harsh to deny people that opportunity. Yeah. Um, this this started uh, our first day of action. You know that went round about all of the colleges uh, in in Scotland. Um, and whereas we might be all right, as we had sort of pointed out at the moment, uh, we have to think about uh, the future of um, Copeland College as a whole, and also the uh, you know. You know, like the workforce, you know, and the students and what have you. So we've started this, having we'll have meetings. You know, we're going to we're we're, we're encouraging people to write to the MSPs. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging them to be more community, you know, uh, activities in the community. You know, to take forward, you know, to North Lanarkshire Council that we're not happy to, or be prepared to accept any cuts that they decide. You know, they decide is appropriate rather than having the likes of community meetings you know in the town halls encouraging people to come together as one and speak as one voice about what we can do um, it's just it's, it's a start you know we hope to go on then and get bigger you know sort of numbers with uh, you know EIS unison student associations communities you know f further afield